Brian's asking, what are we making today? That's an excellent question. We're going to make something that's going to improve everybody's typing speed. That's right, we're making a typing game. It's going to be a lot of fun. How are we going to make a typing game? Well, that's a good question. That's, uh, that is what we're going to try and do today. We're going to um, uh, use Scratch. We're going to use a timer. We're going to learn how to uh, use variables and lists to make our typing game. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then at the end, we're going to be able to get your typing game and test all your parents and test all your friends and family um, to see how fast everyone can type. Okay, it's going to be a lot of fun. And now what I want you to do is choose a backdrop for your uh, typing test. Where do you want to be typing uh, like this typing test to happen? So I'm going to hit the choose backdrop button. And you know what? I kind of want my typing test to be in some sort of fantasy setting. I'm going to set my typing test in a castle. Okay, but you can set your typing test in any kind of situation you want. It can be underwater, in space, on a farm. Uh, you can think about what kind of theme you want your typing test to be, and then you can um, uh, decide where you want to set it. Okay, and then I want you to remove your cat character and then choose a sprite to be your tester. This is the person is going to be telling you what word to type, okay? What word to type. For me, because I am in a castle, I want it to be as told to me by a dragon. I want a dragon to be my typing tester. So I'm gonna have a typing tester who's a dragon. We're going to go into variables and then we're going to set a variable to zero, but we're going to make a new variable. We're going to call this score. Okay, so uh, just see where I just pressed. You press on make a variable, and then you change this variable name to score because this is going to be our score, the player score. It's going to start at zero. So here, make it for all sprites. Make sure you spell score correctly, S C O R E. Then we press on OK. Okay, so OK for all sprites. And then we're going to make it so that as soon as we click the flag, we set the score to zero. So instead of setting my variable to zero, we set to my score to zero. Okay, that's step one. All right, step two, we're going to start making a list of words that we can test the player on. Okay, now when we are uh, creating this typing test, I want you to keep in mind that at the end of the game, at the end of the lesson, you can make as many words as you want, okay? But when we get started, we want to start with just two or three uh, words just to make sure that the game is working, okay? We just want to test to make sure that the game is working before we start adding bunches and bunches of words in, okay? Why do we want to do that? Why don't I just add as many words as I can right at the start? It's because if I add lots of things at the start, it's going to make me very hard, make it very hard for me to test my code because I need to scroll up and down with all my code, right? And that's the same with programming in any kind of language. You want to make sure that you're testing things in, uh, in a small amount as you go. And then once it's working, then you can decorate and add more stuff, add more features to it. Okay, so we'll start small. So uh, keeping that in mind, when we are going to come up with this list of words, we only come up with about three words to get started with, okay? At the end, we will add lots of words, okay? 10, 20 words, but right now we'll start with three words, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, so we're going to create a list. Just under variables, there is a make a list. Uh, button. I want you to click on that. And then I want you to call this word list. Okay, word list. And then make it for all sprites and click on OK. Word list and click on OK. Now, remember that we want to keep this list nice and short for this time being. Okay, so first of all, when we uh, hit the flag, then what we do is we go delete all of the word list so that we don't keep on populating the list every time we click the flag. And then I want you to add three words to the list. Okay, so you go add thing to word list. One thing, two things, three things. 
All right. And what are these three things? I want you to add um, words that you want people to type. Okay. Keep it nice and simple for now. Okay. So for my castle theme, I'm going to have fantasy creatures. Okay. So the first word I'm going to have is troll. The second word I'm going to put in fairy. And then the third word I'm going to put in, I might put in a harder one in here. I'm going to put in unicorn. Okay. So we got three words that we are getting started with for people to type. Okay. This is a typing game. Remember, we want to test people how fast they can type these words. Make sure that you spell them correctly when you add them into the list as well. Because if you don't spell them correctly, then you're not going to be able to test them correctly, right? All right, I'll give everybody a moment to add those, um, those words into the list. Make sure everything is working fine. All right, so remember, at the end of the game, a lesson, you can add a stack more words, okay? For now, I'm just going to add three. Okay, another thing that we're going to do is add some time pressure to the game. We don't want the people like, who are playing a game to spend as much as their time uh, of the time as they want typing. We want them to be like oh, watching a clock countdown and they have to type quicker, right? Otherwise, when the time runs out, they don't get a score. So we want to make sure that there is a little bit of time pressure. To do that, we go into sensing. Okay, sensing over here on the left-hand side. And then we want to create um, a block here that says, uh, or oh, you scroll down, that says a uh, reset timer, reset timer. So you put that uh, just under where you've added all the words to this. Because now, uh, after we've added all the words to the list, we're going to start the timer. Bang, start the clock. That means like we're starting to count uh, to make sure that, um, that you are uh, typing as fast as you can. Okay. And then down the bottom here, there is a repeat until block. You see that? Now it looks very similar to the if block and the forever block and the repeat block. You have to put in the repeat until block. It looks like this. All right, repeat until. Make sure you are reading the words because if you don't read the words, you're going to put in the wrong block. Okay, it says repeat until. When the timer is more than however many seconds, that we want. So here you use this more than 50 symbol, okay? And then what we do is instead of uh, 50, we'll say 20 seconds. And then we put in the timer here so that we are going to run this game until the timer, uh, timer is more than 20 seconds. So we'll end the game after 20 seconds here. So how are we going to do the game? Well, this block of code is not finished yet, okay? Because we have to do something here. We need to repeat this uh, um, something called a function, okay? A function is something that is going to be a custom bit of code that we write that's going to define how the game works, okay? So how is this game going to work? We're going to make it so that uh, as every time we are looping through this function, we want the game to do a few things. We want the character, so my dragon or your ghost or creature, uh, will be asking you to spell a word. And how does he say that? He's going to say type, and then whatever word that we, he wants us to type. And also, where does he get the words? He's going to randomly pick them from the list that we created. So let's have a look at this. What I want you to do is just scroll down a little bit. Oh, actually, you don't need to scroll down a little bit yet. You click on my blocks, okay? On the left-hand side is right down the bottom is my blocks. So a my block is uh, in, in what program is called, uh, called functions, okay? A function and uh, a my block is exactly the same thing. So in Scratch, they call them my blocks. Uh, and in programming language, we call them functions, okay? So this is the function we're going to write. The function is going to call, be called test, okay? A test is going to be when the creature or your character uh, tests the character, tests the player uh, to type something. So let's make a block. 
press on the make a block button. So you press on the make a block button and then you call it test, T-E-S-T. -E After you type in test, you press okay. And then now you'll, you'll see two things happen on your screen. The first thing is that there's a new block here under my blocks called test. Secondly, there's this define test block up the top here in your screen. Now this define test block is used to teach Scratch how to run a test because we need to teach the computer what this function is, okay? So let's go uh, and move it down to the end here so that it's away from all of our code, okay? Just so that we can, uh, we can now populate it. All right, so now first, first thing, first thing is to uh, create uh, a random word, okay? So let's go into variables and create a new variable called word. So make a variable in variables, so you go variables, and then you go make a variable, call it word. Make it for all sprites. And click on OK. All right, so our word, we need to go set the word. So where we say set my variable, we're going to set the word to a random word from our list. Who remembers how we do that from um, the lesson last week? Who remembers last week how we did it? Does anyone remember how to get a random item from a list? In operators, we need pick random one to 10, okay? But instead of to 10, we get uh, from here, our variables, we're going to get the item, the length of word list to replace 10. So we're picking something from the first item of the list to the last item of the list. But then we need to put this inside um, the item number. So we go get an item number one of word list. All right, so make sure you get these three things ready. So set word two, and then you put in here item number one of word list. But now instead of item number one, we're going to pick a random number from one to the length of the word list. And then we replace that over here. Okay, so I'm going to put it down here again. Watch this, so set word to zero. Instead of set word to zero, we set word to item one of word list. And then instead of item one of word list, we pick a random number from item one to the length of our word list. Like that. Okay, I just made my screen a little bit smaller so that you can see more of the code. Set word to item number a random number from one to the length of the word list of word list. And now we're going to go into sensing to get our character to ask us to type something, okay? So it's going to ask and wait. So here there's a block that says, ask what's your name and wait. We're going to drag that out and say, and put it under here. It says, ask what's your name. But of course, we're not going to have what's your name. We're going to have something else. Okay, so you look for sensing and then look for the ask what's your name and wait. And then we're going to join two things together. So you go into operators and then you look down to join apple and banana, okay? And you put in join apple and banana and you replace the what's your name with join apple and banana. 
Of course, we're not going to use apple and banana because we're going to tell, uh, have our creature ask us to type something. So he's going to go type and then space. Type and then space. And then here, instead of banana, we put in word because we've asked, we've set a word to be a random item from the list. And now it's going to ask us to type the word. All right, now one more block is going to let us start testing the game. So all we have to do now is go into my blocks and then you see this test block, you put it into our repeat loop. Put the test block into our loop here, repeat until. And now when you press the flag, you can try to test out your game, okay? Now it's going to not check if you are, have typed it in correctly or not, okay? But at least it is asking you random words, so test it out. So this is what should be happening for everybody's screen, okay? My creature was going to, uh, I'll stop, I'll stop the code, I'll start. It says type unicorn. So uh, I can type anything I want and uh, it's still going to let me uh, keep going, okay? It's going to tell me these random words and I'll just keep on typing, keep on typing, keep on typing until you see the timer, it's reaching 20 seconds. Oh, it's reached 20 seconds. And then after 20 seconds, it won't let me type anymore. Let's continue on. So now we are going to make it so that we can uh, test to see if your answer is correct or not. So here now what we need to do is go into control and then have an if then else block, okay? So this is a uh, condition here inside control. It says if then else. We put that under after you have uh, been asked to type the word. All right. So. When we are checking to see if your answer is correct, this is what we do. If uh, your word, your answer is equal to the word, then we're correct, right? So we go answer in the first block. So we go in sensing and then look for the answer underneath the ask block. So here, if the answer is equal to, instead of 50, we're gonna put in word. If the answer is equal to the word, then we say correct for two uh, for one second because we don't want to say it for too long because otherwise it's going to take up the player's time, right? Say correct for one second, and then also we want to increase the score by one. So change the score by one that's going to increase the player's score. Else, we don't increase the player's score and we only say try again for two seconds. Why am I making two seconds for a wrong answer and one second for a correct answer? Because we want to reward the player uh, for typing incorrectly. We don't want to, uh, to spend too much time filling up their uh, filling up their, their timer, right? So we'll give them a score and also we'll only say correct for one second when they get their word correct. But otherwise, if they typed it incorrectly, we say try again and we'll say it for two seconds to uh, penalize them for, uh, for making a wrong answer. And now your game is almost done. Finally, what we want to do is to say at the end of your loop, uh, your score. So you get another join block where you say apple and banana, but then you say your final score is space, and then you put in your score. So if I have a look at my game, I'll just cover up my code for a, a quick second just to show you the game, how it works. You press the flag, and then if I type in the wrong word, it will say try again. But if I type in the right word, it'll say correct and then increase my score, okay? And then uh, at the end, when, it's, um, when I have typed in my final word, uh, it's going to tell me the, um, uh, the score. 
And it says my final score is one here. See, 